Hello, good day all again. Let's now continue our discussions on pure and conditional obligations. So basically, this is just a continuation. We'll be tackling now Articles 1187. But before that, since we have discussed already what is a suspensive condition and what is a res resolutory condition, let's have a brief um, ika nga, I recall of what are those. Oh, no. So if an obligation is subject to a suspensive condition, nga, so if the condition happens, um, the obligation arises or it becomes effective. So, acquisition of rights na, nagkakaroon ng acquisition of rights. If you, to, if you have to compare it to an obligation which is subject to a um, resolutory condition, if the condition is fulfilled, then the obligation is um, tawag nito, extinguished. Kapag naman ang suspensive condition, to recall, if the condition is not fulfilled, it's as if daw no, walang nagiging obligation na nag exist So, there would be no juridical relations na nag create kapag hindi po nangyayari ang suspensive condition. Whereas naman, kapag resolutory condition, if not fulfilled, yun na nga, the juridical relation is considered as consolidated. Ano? So, kapag naman... Um, under a suspensive condition, take note, it's as if the rights has not been acquired. You know, there is still an expectancy or hope that though, that soon it will be um, it will be acquired. Whereas, sa ating resolutory condition, you have already acquired the rights, you know, but subject to an extinct, um, subject to extinction or extinguishment. So, you know that one na naman. So, ang perfect example nga natin dito na um, lagi ko sinasa, lagi kong binibigyan na example na uh, bibigyan kita ng 1 million on September 30 kapag uh, mapapangasawa mo si Gerald Anderson or si Taeyang, ano sa September 30. So, there is the expectancy or hope na makakatanggap ka ng 1 million pagdating ng September 30 if nangyayari, if mangyayari yung um, condition na yun. So, pag resolutory condition, as an example, okay, sustentuhan kita ng um, 10,000 monthly hanggang sa ikaw ay makatapos ng um, semester na to. So, ang semester ay matatapos ng, ng December. So, at the end of December, surely, um, the right to receive for a support for your education will be um, extinguished or finished. Ano? So, let's go now for Article 1187. That's a brief um, recall of the, our discussions last time. So, as a continuation, Article 1187. Ano bang sabi ng Article 1187? So, the effects thou of a conditional obligation to give once the condition has been fulfilled, shall retroact to the day of the constitution of the obligation. Nevertheless, when the obligation imposes a reciprocal na prestations upon the parties, the fruits and interest during the pendency of the condition shall be deemed to have been mutually compensated. So, if the obligation is unilateral, the debtor shall appropriate the fruits an interest received unless from the nature and circumstances of the obligation it should be inferred that the intention of the person constituting, constituting the same was different so an obligations to do and not to do the court shall determine in each case the retroactive effect of the condition that has been complied with so, iisa-isahin natin. So, basically naman pala, under 1187, ang sinasabi lang dito ay, ano ba yung effects if there would be a fulfillment of a suspensive condition? But before that, let's take a look kung ano ba yung mga effects before the fulfillment of the condition, after the fulfillment of the condition, or when that condition has already been fulfilled. Ano? Let's say one by one first. If we have to, ano, if we have to go back again to our lesson. So, tatandaan natin if before the fulfillment of the condition, um, the demandability at the same time, the acquisition, the effectivity of rights, 
suspended yon. Wala tayong karapatang mag-demand or mag um, i-enforce kasi hindi pa po nangyayari ang hindi pa na-fulfill ang condition. Pero kapag na-fulfill ang condition, then everything's come into play such as the demand, the enforceability, ano. Here, in obligations to give under Article 1187, so ito na yun, papasok na yun, 1187, what if the, the condition has been fulfilled or happened, ano, it shall retroact, ito lang naman ang pinaka-material dito, retroact daw to the day of the constitution of the obligation. So, ang bali ang reckoning date, kung yan ay question ng ownership, eh di, dun po tayo mag uh, re retro or babalik ta na dun sa period kung kailan talaga nagkaroon, nag enter sila into the obligation or agreement. Tama ba? So, it shall retro to the day of the constitution of the obligation. Ano? And then, uh, let's say for example, dyan, as an example ko kanina, on January 30, um, I promise to sell my land to you um, at 10,000, although the worth is 1 million. I promise to sell to you my land at 10,000, provided or on the condition that you will marry Gerald Anderson on September 2020. Atin na lang isi-shorten. Ano, bakit po gusto nyo si Gerald Anderson? Anyway, si Tayong. 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 Ewan. Um, basta yun yung aking condition on September 30, 2020. Bibigyan natin, bibigyan ko, bibigyan ko kayo ng time pa. Ano, nagkakaroon tayo ng um, agreement last May 20, January 2019. Ano, January 2019 na kapag ngayong September 30 ay ibibenta ko yung aking lupa ng 10,000 lang kahit siya 1 million kapag I would marry Gerald Anderson. So, ngayon, um, ang tanong ko lang diyan sa period between May, between January 20, uh, uh, period from January 2019 hanggang September uh, 30, 2019 or September 29, 2020, sino ba yung owner ng um, lupa? Yun lang ang tanong. Sino bang owner? Eh di basically po, if we have to look into the effects of a suspensive condition, walang demandability, walang pang acquisition of rights, kasi suspended pa dahil na hindi pa nangyayari nga ang ating suspensive condition. Pero kapag nangyayari yan, um, I remain yet the owner from the period until September 2020. Pero pagdating po ng September 2020, September 30, 2020, at you marry, you happen to marry um, Gerald Anderson, then everything comes into play. You could demand for the delivery of the land at the same time, payment of, you just have to pay for 10,000, na no. And, if we have to look into that, applying the principles under 1187, um, you become the owner already. And the effect is retroactive, dating back to January, ano kailan yun? January um, 2019. So, that was the time when the obligation was being um, constituted. So, yun lang po yun. Ano? What if pala? What if mayayari dyan? And let's continue. Ano? So, yun po yun. What if daw merong mga fruits and interest? And, and very important under 1187. Ano? Basically, ang nangyayari ay para po tayong merong conditional na sale. Tama ba? Ano? So, ibibenta ay i-deliver and there would be payment of, of how much was it? Uh, 100,000 or 10,000? I forgot the amount. Um, if um, the condition will happen. So, ngayon, paano ba mapapreserve ni creditor yung rights under such um, um, contract or agreement that they have entered into? Eh di, ang gagawin po ni debtor, 
ay dapat po maipa-register niya sa Registry of Deeds, maipapa-annotate niya na meron pong nangyayaring um, conditional sale on the property. Ano, para in between those dates na nas ang ownership na suspended pa yung kanyang enforceability or demandability in between those dates from the constitution to the happening or fulfillment of the condition at least yung outside uh, third persons na walang knowledge dun ay may inform ano they could check with the RD whether it has an encumbrance or meron bang burden doon sa property yung mga mamimili kasi po alam naman natin under the principles of um principles po natin ng kapag po ay mas protected ng law kapag ikaw ay buyer in good faith. Let's say for example you bought the land from me without the knowledge na it has been subject to a conditional sale doon sa condition na imamarry niya si Gerald Anderson. So, ay dapat po yun ay naka-annotate or naka-inscribe ano, kasi if in case man ibibenta ko sa a third person without the knowledge and you without having it um, inscribed or annotated in the property, then um, ang mangyayari ay much well protected yung third person. So, hindi ka po pwedeng maghabol uh, bawiin or recover yung property who have bought the same from me in good faith. Ang iyong habol ay from me. So, as a protection, as a preserve, uh, um, as a protection uh, for you that hindi po siya makokonvey uh, and then you would have a better right over the property than have it inscribed. So, yun nga po. In cases po with retroactive effects as to the fruits naman, fruits and interest. So, yan, kapag unilateral, na-mention na natin um, dati yung when it comes to unilateral lang na mga obligations at may, mga, yun, may unilateral lang na obligations or may reciprocal na mga prestations. Um, kapag unilateral, ang rule po natin ay, will, the debtor will have to get for the fruits, tama ba? Whereas naman, kapag reciprocal, then, nandito yun sa example, is being provided by the leon. Kapag reciprocal naman, the fruits and interest during the pendency, of course, um, of the condition are being mutually compensated. So, yun yung sinasabi diyan, oh. um, being mutually compensated. So, there is no retroactive effect when... Uh, effects as to fruits and interests and obligations to give. There is no retroactive effect because the fruits and interests received during the pendency of the condition are deemed to have been mutually compensated. This rule is necessary for purposes of convenience since the parties would not to, ren to render mutual accounting of what they have received. So, ano bang example? Kung pagbabasehan natin, yung nagiging example natin a while ago regarding doon sa, I would promise to uh, sell, sell to you my land for 10,000 lang ba yun? So, 10,000 if on the condition that you would marry Gerald Anderson on September 30, 2020. I made that promise last 2019. So, let's say for example, yung luckily Gerald Anderson married you and then um, there are certain fruits na nag-accru sa land ano? may mga fruits na pagpapalagay natin worth five uh, uh, 10,000 tapos ay ano naman uh, nagkakaroon naman ng interest earned doon sa pera na is supposed to be na ibabayad mo let's say for example ay 5,000 so consider it daw as mutually compensated although 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 they are unequal so para ang nangyayari na yan diyan ay um ang nangyayari ay the fruits and interest i yun na nga although hindi siya equivalent ay nag-offset o offset siya from each other ano kasi daw ang ang katwiran daw diyan according to um um according uh, sa ating libro uh, the necessary purpose is for the convenience since the parties would not have to render for mutual accounting on what they have received and then in unilateral obligations wala po siyang retroactive na effect because they are basically, basically gratuitous. So, ano bang example nito? Yun yung sinasabi ko last time na example na 
Oh, I just promised to give you uh, my land. Parang unilaterally, wala ka namang hinihingi. Ano, ako lang ang nagpa-promise, inuoblig ako lang ayon sa sarili. So, the debtor receives nothing from the creditor. Thus, the written interest belongs to the debtor unless from the nature and circumstances. It should be inferred that the intention of the person constituting the same was different. So, in that case, so here are some examples as well. So, pagpapalagay ba daw? CS promises to donate his land to B. So, upon the fulfillment of the condition, S has to deliver the land, but he has the right to keep himself the fruits and interest he may proceed during the pendency of the condition if there was a condition uh, being set under 1187. Um, and now, so that ends our discussion under 1187.